There you go. Try not to get the camera. So that's what we're aiming for. Same again. All done. We're just going to nip very quickly down the road because to show you where these girls are spending their winter because it's not a classic Kiwi sort of situation. Look, it's just like being at home. Today we're in a race against the Rotary, so no time to film an intro. If you've been watching a few of these New Zealand vlogs, you will have noticed that the dairy farming in New Zealand is extremely seasonal. They carve cows in late winter and early spring, so when the cows hit the peak of their lactation curve, i.e. when they're producing the most milk, the grass is growing at its fastest to keep them fed. And now, heading into winter, the 2022-23 season is coming to a close. With modern dairy cows, farmers have to plan at the end of the season pretty carefully. They can't just stop milking the cows and do nothing else without running the risk of a lot of mastitis, which is not only an extremely painful condition for the cows, but also economically a disaster for the farmer. So they have to plan for this careful shutting down of the cow's lactation, and this process is called drying off. And that's what we're doing today. More detail to come later. Before that though, I know what you're all thinking. What on earth am I wearing? I just thought I'd show you off my costume for the day. So obviously I've got these like, long gloves on, the long, long uh, cuffs. I've got these like milking sleeves, which stop your arms getting dirty and rubbing all the time. Show off my apron, should have been a dinner lady. And you've got this dry off um, belt here. So I've got in there, I've got like meth balls, Cotton ball soaked in meth, got some antibiotic tubes for the dry cow and the teat sealant in a pocket. And so it's all there nice and handy. So yeah, that's dry cow fashion. So we're just getting into it here. Got Ben with me, haven't I Ben? I'll check where my, uh, let's see if like people can hear that. There you go, that's better. Yeah, got Ben with me, you're just getting into it. I don't think you've met Ben before, but you're another American, aren't you, Ben? Another American. Another American come to New Zealand, well done. Good choice. And we're here today uh, doing a dry-off job, which we've basically been the last two or three weeks, isn't it? <laughs> dry-off, 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 along with some dry-off scans. Drying off, if you're not familiar, is basically when we stop milking the cows, or the farmers stop milking the cows, and that's something that would happen very naturally, like they yield, how much they produce is starting to tail off anyway, just naturally. And the farmers will be doing lots of things to encourage that, like feeding them less, especially less protein. So yeah, so the other thing we do is give them intramammaries, which is a, yeah, a sort of drug infusion into each teat. And traditionally that would have been an antibiotic, wouldn't it, Ben? Yep. So like a long-acting antibiotic to protect against any infections and cure any infections that are, might be rumbling away. But as you can imagine, with public health, I'm worrying more about resistant strains in people as well as animals. That's like less, less acceptable these days for good reason. And so the majority of these cows actually won't be getting an antibiotic at all, but they're getting this stuff, which is like a waxy, I think it's bismuth. Bismuth? Uh, so it's, it, it mimics the natural sealant so that a cow would normally produce. Well, a lot of dairy cows struggle to produce these days. Now they would normally form something called a keratin plug. Um, so where was I? Where was I? Um, so yeah, these cows are getting this stuff, and I'll I'll, I'll not spend one now, but. Uh, We'll, I've actually got some expired tubes in the car. I can show you what's in it. It's this real waxy sort of white substance. And um, yeah, that will sit in the canal and it actually has to be, sits in the canal really well to the extent that some of the farmers get a bit concerned about how, how much they have to milk it out when a cow or heifer comes to actually be milked. Um, but yeah, the, these cows are actually touch wood being really well behaved. You obviously have to be real clean with what you're doing because you're introducing something into the teat canal. The last thing you want to do is actually give them mastitis. Thanks, mate. Um, so yeah, we want to be real clean. And these guys are actually pre-cleaning them for us, the teat ends, which is fantastic. It really speeds things up. You see here, um, 
dry teats and they're nice and pre-cleaned. You can see the teat wipes. I'll just show you what we're aiming for. So we want, don't need the whole teat clean, just need a bit where the product's gonna go in. So you can see there, that's nice, nice and open because they've been milked recently, like as they coming around. You can see there, there you go. I don't want to get the camera. So that's what we're aiming for. So we'll give that area a final clean with, as I showed you before, one of these um, meth soaked cotton balls, and then the product will go in. And she's, as you can see, she's got no orange stripes, so she's a, like just a sealant cow. So because we're just wanting to get for this stuff, thanks mate, because this is a seal, we want it to stay down here. So I just sort of pinch off the top there, in it goes, just the tip, and make sure it sort of stays in this bit rather than going all the way up into the other. So you've got tiny little teats, this one. Tiny little teats. One's away clean. Great cow to pick, this one. Whoa, steady, darling. Same again. All done. It's really thick and waxy. So when it's cold, it <laughs> sounds really feeble, but it can be, when you're doing like your 100th cow, or 400th tea or whatever. Your hands get it, pretty sore. Your hands get pretty sore. So what's brilliant is it's here. Before we even arrived, they had it warming up. So it's warm water in here, out of the tank. This just sits in there, put the lid back on. And that keeps those real nice and, um, really nice and sort of smooth flowing out the tube. So that's one way to spoil your vets and techs. And they're pre-cleaning, and they've got the radio on. I mean, uh, we are being spoiled, aren't we, Ben? I haven't had any official numbers yet, but there'll be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of cows dried off like this across the practice over the last couple of weeks. And it's just, it's New Zealand all over, really. It's seasonality. Uh, scale people just sort of get it done so yeah I reckon uh, again I wasn't here five years ago but from working with people and talking to other farmers there'll be quite a lot of herds who say five ten years ago would have been dry sort of drying off every single cow with antibiotics which don't get me wrong that would have been the advice not that long ago like the official advice but times change and now there are a lot of farms where they're drying off maybe only a third to a quarter of cows with a, a dry cow antibiotic and it's all sealant the, re well, the remainder are all sealant and then I mean only I reckon of the herds I work with I've been working with over here small minority have been um, still do a uh, blanket and that's reducing I think probably every year. So what this means for the cows is that they can, after this they get to go on their uh, winter holidays. So they get a break from milky and kiwi cows get quite a long dry period compared to cows in a lot of other countries. So often it'll be like a minimum, I'd say like 60 days. So we're the 1st of June today and most people start calving sort of um, at the very end of July or start of August. I should say this isn't an instructional video. <laughs> you say like you're a vet student watching this or something or a dairy farmer or new to dairy farming. There's a great um, for one from Zoetis who make a lot of these products. So I will post the link to that somewhere in the video description. Another combo cow here. These guys here will have their own criteria for them. Um, basically it's risk based, right? So yeah, anything that looks like it's maybe got a subclinical infection based on its, what we call it, cell count, or anything which is at high risk for some other reason. So 
sometimes like low slung adders, real like slack alices. Uh, not that this scale is particularly low, but um, or teats that point outwards and therefore a more risk of getting dirty and infected. And I think it's a real like win because like a lot of herds in New Zealand probably over the last five years will have gone from treating every cow all four quarters to a lot of the herds now I'm we're sort of going out to it sort of a third or maybe even less and Ben's got a slightly sensitive one there. That's a bit of a weird feeling. Yeah I think it will be a weird feeling. Um, but these girls are being really good today. It's amazing how different everyone's cows are. So today it's just uh, like 60 or 70, I think. Yeah, about 60, I believe. Yeah, that's a nice small batch. Like, you tend to send more people on bigger jobs. I think the biggest job I've been on so far is just north of 500. But there, to be fair, there were five of us there. And then some, there's another team this week that went and did, and they got up about three o'clock to go and do 800 on one farm, uh, which is pretty, pretty hardcore. I was just saying before, this is not a tall man's game. I've yet to be shat on this season properly. Ben got good, he got got good the other day. So I'll find a photo of that. He went down his top, but I'm always vigilant. You've got to stay vigilant, stay ready. What is that, is that Dave Goggins? Stay ready. Sure. Jesus Christ, man. Just thinking about it. She's done or she's thinking about it, I'm not sure. Just, she is aiming at me. Go on, darling, just put that tail down. You know what, I'm gonna move along. You know what, she, she must be done now. Do the sideways shuffle. Hey Ben, shit in my face for that one. Last cow, or second to last cow. See, I told you this was good for cleaning your face in the last vlog. Yeah, we probably, we got here at nine, like we landed here at nine. It's quarter past 10 now. So we've probably been going for an hour, that's about 60 or 70 cows, about a cow a minute, which I think is pretty good just shows you what you can do like when everything's right so like the cows on a rotary they're loading themselves like it doubles up as a as a handling pen the guys here are pre-cleaning them that saves a lot of time most of the cows were uh teat seal only so they're getting just four tubes in their udder not eight and also um they're just really well behaved easy peasy we're just going to nip very quickly down the road because to show you where these girls are spending their winter because it's not a classic kiwi out on fodderby or out on swede sort of situation it is, like we just came out and it's 1st of June today, so the equivalent of 1st of December in the UK and it is incredibly mild. Like, I'm pretty warm in this. Um, I don't know what it will be, but it will be near enough like 10 degrees. You can see that, I mean, obviously you can't feel the temperature, but um, it's lovely, like this grass will still be growing. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like winter yet. I'm sure I'll come to regret saying that in a couple of days. Yeah, so you dry off like, as you can see, yeah, it's not the most exciting job in the world, but when it's going smoothly, it's pretty, you, you feel like you're making progress. Um, but there are worse jobs, you know what I mean? Like I would, I would rather do that than TB testing every day of the week. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of it here all in a very condensed pattern but it is only for like two or three weeks before you're even into it you're nearly halfway well, some of you were familiar with like how kiwis tend to outwinter cows and that tends to be outdoors and like a forage crop so like a swede or a kale or a fodder beet it's quite unusual for them to have a wintering barn and lo and behold we're in a wintering barn so look it's just like being at home like for me and bin because the cows are under cover Look, they've got automatic scrapers, got cubicles, and um, it's really interesting talking to Richard and Sarah Jane back at the shed because they didn't build this, they, they moved onto the farm 
and it was already here. Rich's words, I think, now are now, like we wouldn't farm without one. Um, obviously, they didn't have to have the expense of actually like building it themselves, which clearly is a, is a big barrier, don't get me wrong. But here in New Zealand, like especially in this part of the world where like the environmental aspects of outwintering have come under quite a lot of focus because of issues with water quality and runoff. Um, I think there's more and more interest, that's my feeling, that's the impression I get anyway, more and more interest in like a how system, which to me is quite funny because back home in the UK, the progressive thing to do increasingly is to kick all the cows out over winter on a forage crop like kale or swedes or fodder beet. Whereas here, I don't know if you call it the progressive thing to do, but it seems to be happening more and more. They're putting up sheds. <laughs> so it's sort of whatever isn't the norm is the progressive thing to do. But just, I just thought I'd show you, look, it's nothing flash. It's just a, it's just a, a wintering barn. You know, in the UK or America, you would have seen hundreds of these, but um, it's, somewhat of a rarity here anyway that's it for this one uh if you enjoyed that don't forget to click subscribe give the video a thumbs up we'll see you next time <laughs> i'll see you next time <laughs> cheers guys <laughs>